KVMs can be expensive. And today I've got the Pi KVM version three. So let's unbox it and set it all up. Let's get started. Got the unit itself and this thing is very heavy. And here's some other items that were packaged with it. Looks like we have some other cables to probably install on the uh like the gpio headers on here i believe you can wire this up to an existing machine to turn the computer on and off so it looks like that you would take those wires and actually wire this up and be able to power cycle using this somehow let's crack this open and see what it's like inside So here is the inside. So you can see the original Raspberry Pi here, and then it connects up to the Pi KVM Shield version 3.3. Power and connection, Ethernet ports, USB and ATX, and video in. And then we have a little screen on top here too. And the side with the fan here actually has video out as well. Now I'm going to just take this and go plug it into the server and boot it up and see if we can access it. Now what's cool about the Pi KVM is the LCD screen will give you the IP address of what it got off of your network if you're running DHCP. So plug that into the browser, advanced, and proceed. The default username and password should just be admin. Now that we are logged in, you can see there's the KVM terminal and log out. Go to the KVM and look at that. <laughs> I'm rebooting my server and we'll see if it picks up any video as it reboots here. All right, so it is picking up the video now. Interesting how it's uh, kind of glitching out on me. I wonder if we change the video mode, if that will make it any more reliable. Maybe I'll just need to SSH in and update it. What's interesting is after it came up, it went ahead and fixed itself. I didn't update it or anything yet. You can see on the cursor, it has the cursor as well as like the little circle that's moving around on the screen. And it's like the circle is your actual mouse and then the cursor is slightly off. So that's interesting. Since this is running so far, let's uh, go ahead and put this back up to uh, like 80%. So I wonder how smooth video will be on this. Uh, you can see the choppiness. Inside of the Pi KVM, you have shortcuts. Here, it looks like you can just paste stuff into here. So we'll hit OK. Cool. And there's also macros, like you can record and playback and even upload some scripts, which is pretty interesting. This is neat too, text recognition. So that's OCR, which is optical character recognition. If I just hit select area, there we go, enter maybe. Oh no, it says it's copied to the clipboard. Hmm, let's try it again. So I select it, hit enter. It says it is copied to the clipboard. And it's not in my clipboard here. Try just on a single word. Nothing. I'm not sure why that doesn't work. If you know why it's not copying into the clipboard, please go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know what I'm doing wrong on this. You can also emulate a drive. So it looks like here you can upload a image and then you can simulate CD-ROM or flash memory to be able to boot your computer directly off of the Pi KVM. Now, if you have the ATX module installed, then here is where you can control that. So I guess the MJPEG might have some problems and back over to WebRTC and that works just fine. So if we click back on here, it looks like we can just sign out there. Got a terminal right here. No need to SSH in. The Pi KVM is mounted in read-only mode. Guess I don't know the password for that. We'll just try switching the user. There we go. So that's root and root. And now we will put it into read-write mode. Now we'll update it with Pac-Man. So now that it's updated, we want to put it back into read-only mode. Now it's going to reboot. Now that it's been a while, let's see if it will reconnect. Maybe I need to log back into it. There we go. Now that it's updated, let's see if MJPEG will work for us. Nope. If you know why that is, go ahead and drop it in the comment section below. But for now, I'll just stick with H.264 over WebRTC. What's interesting is I'm hitting F11 on the keyboard and it won't go full screen. Let's try that. Oh, there we go. And pressing and holding escape goes ahead and brings you back out. So what do you think of the Pi KVM? Tell me in the comment section down below. Overall, I like it. It seems pretty responsive here for me. I don't know what's up with the MJPEG not working for me, but either way, it's it's working 
fine for them. Now I know there is a HDMI switch that you can connect this into, so you can basically roll your own entire KVM switch there if you have multiple servers or machines that you want to be able to connect it to. And that's pretty cool because then if you want to grow how many machines that it's connected to and to be able to control it from a single device, essentially as your own, roll your own KVM, then this is definitely able to do that. So check this out. This is the Pi KVM ATX. And let me show you how this works. And I'll have links down in the description here if you want to check that out. But basically you can print a mounting plate to drop it in a PCI Express slot on your computer, just like this here. And then you wire it up right over to your motherboard. And after you have this installed, like in the photos here, then you can use a straight ethernet cable to connect from the ATX port right over here over to this guy here that will be inside of your computer. And then you'll be able to turn the computer on and off and reboot it directly through the Pi KVM. 